Hello, welcome to a very exciting creature tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover the brand new Godot 3 runtimes that Creature now supports. So Creature has is now supporting the new Godot 3 engine uh, runtimes, and this means you can actually run Creature animations in Godot 3, which is, I think, what everybody has been clamoring for. You can see there is a Godot 3 page up on now on the Creature Godot GitHub page, and all the links are provided, as well as an updated documentation on how to use some exciting features like skin swapping and whatnot. So I encourage you to go read up on it. And before we begin, I'd like to say that this plugin is work in progress. And eventually the goal is once GD native, a very powerful feature of Godot 3 is, is mature enough, We'll probably make a port to GD Native as well. So some of the processes of building and using a plugin will probably or might change. But without further ado, let me start the tutorial. So to start off, you need to actually grab the Godot 3 engine source from the GitHub page and build the engine because the creature Godot 3 plugin is actually a Godot C++ module. This is for performance. And so I would recommend that you go to the Godot engine GitHub and clone the latest stable code repository from them that has Godot 3 in it. Uh, that's very easy. And then please read up on the instructions instructions on how to build the engine. It's actually not that difficult. In fact, it's actually quite easy once you get a hang of it. So that will allow you to actually build the creature Godot 3 runtimes and get up to speed with it. Okay, so the new Creature Godot 3 runtimes are located in the Creature Godot 3 directory. So if you go in there, you're going to see two directories. One of them is called Godot 3 Demo. That is actually an example scene that has been conveniently set up for you to look at what how the Creature 3 Godot 3 runtime runtimes are like, how it runs. You can play around with the sample code and see what it does. And then more importantly, the Creature Godot 3 runtimes itself is located in the creature Godot directory. So click on that and that gives you all the files, right? Now, how do you set this up? So assuming you have actually cloned, assuming you have actually cloned the Godot 3 engine and have gone through a tutorial or the write up on their page on how to build the engine, I'm going to take you through the process again. Okay, this is a very simplified process, but I can show you how easy it is. And you realize building Godot 3 engine is not that difficult. Okay, so it's actually super simple. First of all, in the Godot 3 in the Godot 3 directory, there is a directory called modules, right? So if I go if I if I if I if I go into modules, I do an ls on it, you'll notice that there are a lot of directories in there. And what you should do is you should basically drag and drop the creature Godot directory directly into the modules directory. Just put it in there. And that's all you need to do. Then you go back up one folder. Okay, so now I'm the in the Godot root folder and you just do ascons platform and you pick your platform. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to build for Windows. If you're on some other platform like Mac or Linux, you pick your appropriate platform string, press enter, and it will go through and build the engine. Now in my case, I finished building the engine, so it's done. But that's all really, that's that's all it is to it. It's actually super, super simple. This assumes you have as cons the build system set up. So that again is documented in the Godel engine building instructions that's listed on this web page and linked to it. So I encourage you to read through it. But again, I want to emphasize it's not that difficult. So once you've done that, the creature Godel 3 module is fully built up and we can start using it. So let's go back into Creature and let's export out a character out into Godot 3 Engine. I'm going to use our fox character, which is this nice running fox with a bunch of other animations like idle and jump. Okay, and the way you export it is super simple. Move your mouse over to export, click on Game Engines, and it's going to build the assets for export. So you can see all the different animations that are associated with this character, right? And you can tweak the options, like you can tweak the resolution, you can tweak the compression options. So one very cool thing about this new Godot 3 runtime is the new creature Godot 3 runtime support the fancy gap step animation compression options for, for the runtimes. So you can actually take advantage of reduced sizes 
if you want. It helps quite a bit in, in, in optimizing export sizes and all that. So again, I encourage you to use this new runtime. So once you're done with it, you click on export and you pick a directory to put this new game asset in. Okay, so I'm going to show you the results of this export. So the results of this export are a bunch of files in that export folder. And really, there's only three files you care about. One of them is the JSON file. That is the character exported asset. The actual character exported asset it contains the animation, the skeleton, etc. The next file you do care about if you're doing special things like, say, skin swapping or animated region ordering or events or that sort of thing. You care about the metadata file. That's the .m data file, the, the extension of .m data. And finally, you definitely care about the .png file because that's the character atlas, right? So you copy these three files, drag it into your new Godot engine project, and then let's get started. So let's start Godot engine. So Godot engine three is starting up. Very, very exciting. I'm going to open my current project, but we're going to start a brand new scene and then load up the Fox character and animate it for you to see. So this will load up the, this current Godot 3 demo. It's pretty cool. You should check it out. But let's make a brand new empty scene. Now what I'm going to do is I move my mouse over to scene and press on the add create a new node button. And I search for creature. There is a creature Godot node, so click on create. I'm, for the, the purposes of this example, I'm going to make him the root node. But again, I know if you're authoring an actual game, you have some other root node, but we're doing a demo here. <laughs> okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you will set its actual asset file name. So I go res, and I had it as fox.json, so I'm going to load the fox up. So that's our fox. You see that? So let's. Uh, increase his size all right now he's completely blank right now so we have to assign him a texture and that's very simple i just move my mouse over to fox.png and drag over the fox texture and there you go that's our fox right okay so if we actually play it right now you won't see any animation let me just call it test okay i'll save it as a test scene if you play it right now you probably won't see any animation because we haven't activated it in the GD script. So that's the next step, but at least you see the fox. Well, okay, so I am going to use GD script, Godel script to actually activate the fox animation. So how do we do that? Very simple. Right click on the creature Godel object or node and click on attach script. And we're going to use GD script, GD script, but of course you can actually use the visual script as well and that works too so you can actually take advantage of Godot's very powerful visual scripting features in Godot 3 to script your object okay and i am going to give this a name or rather i'm just going to create it right now called test.gd that works okay so if you go back to the documentation what you do is just copy this chunk and i'm going to explain to you what it does and we'll paste it into the Godot script editor all right and let me save Okay, so let's let's go through. Let's see what happens here. Actually, I forgot to extend the Godot class, so I need to extend it as well. Okay, so first things first, you extend the creature Godot node, which is what this is, and then in the underscore ready callback, this is when the node first loads. You you say set process is true. This means it's going to have a callback per tick every frame, and in the process callback, as a time there's a time delta variable. Just pass that variable into update animation, and that should be it. So if we go back again, and if I play the edited scene, let's see what happens. And there you go. So our character, our fox character now, is successfully idling with the idle animation. It's pretty cool. Now, how do we actually make it switch animations, right? Let's make it switch to a running animation. How do we do that? Well, let's use the power of GD script again to do what we want to switch animations. So if you go back to the documentation and if you take a look at what's available, there are animation functions like blend to animation, which will actually allow you to blend this character to a target animation. So let's give that a go. So let's go back again. And I'm going to say now, I'm going to say self dot blend to animation. Okay. And I'm going to give it a name. I think it's called run or yes, a run. And I'm going to give it a blend factor 0 0.1. So the higher the blend factor, the faster the character switches to the target animation. Right now it's in the idle animation and I'm saying 
switch to the run animation with a delta of 0.1. So let's see what happens right now. Let's play this, this edited scene and we can see it in action. There you go. So now you get the fox character that's actually running. It actually blended over to the run animation on startup. Pretty cool. Okay, so now you actually see the fox character running successfully in Godot 3. So that's just a brief overview of what it can do. But let's actually take a look at the creature Godot test scene because that is probably a lot more impressive and there's a couple things going on. So let me play it for you right now and let's discuss and analyze what's going on in the test scene. So you can see a lot of things going on here. There's multiple characters and this is demonstrating the power of the creature Godot 3 runtimes. It's very performant. You have this fox character here that's switching between idle and run cycle animations smoothly using animation blending. We have multiple characters with mesh deformations going on like this bat and this character here. And this is all running with some of the characters that are actually exported with the fancy gap step animation compression option, so it's more efficient. Now for this girl character over here, if I press the keys ASD, you can see I'm actually switching between different costumes of her. So this is demonstrating the new skin swapping feature that's available in Creature and now the new Creature 3 Godot 3 runtimes can also take advantage of skin swapping so you can actually swap in and out items at runtime dynamically too. There's even functions that allow you to add in skin swapping items dynamically so you can author your own custom skin, skin swaps in Godot 3 at runtime. Okay, so I'm going to stop this demo first. Let's start off with the fox character here. You noticed the fox was actually transitioning between a running and an idle animation. Let's see how it's done. So if I go to the script place option or tab, <laughs> let's see, this is the actual script of the fox. And you can see it's super simple. First of all, in the ready, ready callback, it's blending to the run cycle animation. That was simple. We, we understood what, that was, what was going on. Now in the process callback, in each per frame process, what's happening is we have a counter and this accumulates over time. So when we say when it mods 200, that is when it hits a 200 uh, multiple, it will switch to a default animation, which is this idle. And I'm going to blend to it in a 0 0.05 uh, delta. So it's going to blend more slowly to the idle animation. And then when it hits again a counter of 420, when it hits the multiple of 420, I'm going to switch or blend smoothly into a run cycle animation. And that's all it is. And that allows the fox to basically switch between running and idle. Okay. Now let's look at this girl, which is more interesting because she actually uses the new skin swapping feature, which is very fancy, very cool. But again, you can see it's super simple to use in this runtime. What you do at the very beginning is, oh, actually one more thing. You have to set up the metadata for her. So let me just pull this window out so you can see what's going on. Now in the metadata file name, as you can see over here, this property over here, make sure you point the mData file to this property over here. So in this in this girl character, her metadata is called swapgirl.mdata. So you type res colon slash slash swapgirl.mdata. Swapgirl and that will load in her metadata, which has all the information that she requires for the for the skin swapping. That's what she has for skin swapping. Okay, so without further ado, let's look at her script. So very simple. First of all, we blend to the cape animation. That's nothing, we knew that already. But what we do is we actually just go in and we set the skin swap name. So she has three different item swaps, a cape, a dress sword, and a default gun, all of which equip her with different items. So I'm saying at the get-go, make her go use the cape swap set, skin swap set. And then finally, this you just call this once, you call enable skin swap. That's all you need to do. And this will actually enable skin swapping on this character. And you're good to go. Now, during the actual input, so this is the user input process when the user actually comes in and presses a key. If a key A is pressed, I say switch to the skin swap set cape. If key S is pressed, switch, switch to the dress sword. And if key D is pressed, switch to default gun. Okay. And, and so if we, let's go back to the scene. If we play this again, we, we will notice very fast, very quickly that if I press the different keys and cycle through them, I'm switching through her costume. See that? That's all it is to skin swapping. It's very simple to, to activate it in Godot script. Right. 
And finally, let's take a look at the visual scripting. That's a very exciting functionality of God of 3. If you take a look at the horse, the horse character is actually done in Godel's visual scripting layout or language or feature, whatever you want to call it, where it gives you a graph-based, node-based visual approach to scripting the Godel objects and nodes. And so you can see that in here, I have basically set the function as underscore process as a standard override for the uh, the override, the per frame process, right? And I'm calling update animation. And similarly, in the underscore ready, which is when it first starts up, I'm saying set process to true. So this is exactly the same code I'm doing in GD script, but now in the visual, visual scripting layer. Exactly the same thing. In ready, I say set process enable to true, and then I say I call blend to animation to actually start blending the animation. So all these nodes are available and expose to you in the visual scripting layer as well. So you can pick and choose however you want to script up your character. You can either use the GD script or you can use a visual scripting functionality to do it. It's, uh, it's totally up to you. And in the future, we're also gonna port this runtime to GD native. So it's gonna be even more exciting and we're gonna give you even more options. So let's go back and run the scene again. And you can see the whole thing in action. This is the new, brand new, Godo 3 Creature Runtimes. I thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy this new addition to the Creature Runtime family. Thanks for watching and happy animating.